Hello, everyone. Um, can I get a can I get a quick sound check to make sure that everyone can hear me? Okay. Hello. Good. All right. I'm getting a few hellos there. Thank you. Um, okay. So sorry that. Uh, the presentation is running late. Um, there was a total mix up with the times. We thought it was in 45 minutes time from now. So apologies to everyone. Uh, I hope to make it up to you. Um, uh, so uh, firstly, let me try and share my webcam. I am in an absolutely terrible lighting area. And, uh, but I'll show you that I'm real and I'm here. And this is not a recording. So, so here I am. Hello to everybody. Uh, but I'm going to turn my webcam off. Uh, just uh, at least, at least you know that I that I am here. Um, I don't know why the lighting is so bad uh, today, but we'll do this without without um, without uh, uh, lighting, without a webcam today. So first, before we get going, I want to give you a, a quick disclaimer. Then I'll tell you about who, uh, who I am and what we're going to do today. So a quick disclaimer is uh, trading financial products such as CFDs on margin carries a high degree of risk and is not suitable for all investors. So losses can exceed initial investment. Please ensure you fully understand the risks and appropriate care to manage your risk. Okay, so that's the disclaimer. We'll get the legal out the way uh, and let's get going uh, with the webinars. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, share my screen. Give me one moment to do that. Okay, I hope that everybody can see my screen. Is Can I get a little okay that you can see uh, my MT4? All right, good, okay. So what we're gonna be discussing today is uh, really an overview of the uh, Auto Charters product. What I, the first thing I wanna say to you is that I'm not trying to sell you anything here. Um, the Auto Charters product is available to you uh, for free, included in your Tickmill uh, live funded account, right? Um, so this is not a sales pitch. Um, you can put your guards down. This is purely an informational uh, webinar. And uh, so that you know who I am, my name is Ilan Asbel. I am currently the CEO at Autochartist. I was one of the founders of the company over 15 years ago. I have a background in trading. Um, uh, my, my, my degree is actually many, many years ago, over 20, 30 years ago, uh, mathematics and computer science. Uh, then I went uh, quite heavily into trading. I used to trade a lot of stocks, still um, trade uh, quite a bit. Uh, so you can ask me questions not only about the auto charters tool, but also about trading itself. What we'll be doing today in today's webinar is a uh, very simple, a quick overview of what the what the auto charters product uh, does, um, and uh, and then in the next webinar event we'll be going into more a detailed uh, analysis of the of the usage. So for today uh, we'll be focusing on uh, a general overview of the product and what to click in order to get it running. So if you, if, well, firstly, I'm not going to show you this first step, which is to um, to get that thing installed. But if you go to the uh, Tickmill uh, uh, website, there'll be an installer, uh, uh, a link to install the uh, Auto Chartist application. And once you go through a very, very basic uh, kind of next, next, next uh, um, process, you'll get this expert advisor in the bottom left uh, of your of your screen, and you can see this expert advisor on the bottom left of your screen over here called Auto Charters. Now, many uh, traders are a little bit concerned about dropping this onto their chart uh, because they think expert advisors always uh, uh, trade on your behalf. This is not the case um, with Auto Charters. Uh, the reason it's an expert advisor is that because we use some um, some interesting technology that MetaTrader has built into the platform uh, that we can only do through expert advisors and not through indicators. Um, and that uh, interesting uh, um, functionality is what I'm showing you on the screen right now. It's the ability to scan the market. Okay, now 
if you notice that I have a Euro USD four hourly chart available, but Auto Chartist itself is actually showing me um, uh, available trade setups across all the instruments in the market, right? So not only Euro USD, but USD CAD, Swiss Franc, GBP, uh, 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 Kiwi Yen, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, more specifically, AutoChartist scans all the instruments you have in your market watch list on the top left hand side. Okay, so for example, if we uh, take this, uh, uh, we see this NZD JPY example that we have here in the market, right? NZD JPY. If I don't want that to come up, uh, all I would do is I would remove that instrument from my market watch list because it means I don't trade it. And the next time I drag and drop order charters onto uh, this uh, chart, uh, the NZD JPY uh, opportunity will not be there. Okay, so what? think about what we've actually done here. So what we're doing is we're scanning the market for trading opportunity or trade setups, and we're doing it without having a million little chart windows open. Right? I've seen some traders trading with you know, uh, four, sometimes six, sometimes eight or 12 little charts, tiny little charts where you can't even see what's going on, uh, trading with all those kind of things on their, on their, win on their uh, MetaTrader, it makes it absolutely impossible to use. So what we're doing here is we're actually scanning the market without having multiple windows. And let's see what uh, exists in the market right now for us, right? So um, uh, let's look at the Canadian dollar. Okay, so this is uh, quite interesting. Notice what I did is I clicked on USD CAD H1. I clicked on the little view button over here, and notice that my chart changed from Euro USD H4 to um, USD CAD H1. You know? And we can see what's going on in the market right now. So what we've got is Auto Charters has drawn us. I'm just going to move this out the way. Has drawn us some support and resistance levels. Um, uh, uh, between which USD CAD is actually trading, right? And so I'm going to bring up my little drawing tools over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to explain what these levels mean. Notice um, how the chart of USD CAD has been moving uh, between these almost parallel lines. That's why we call it a rising wedge, right? Not a rising channel, because not really a channel, they're kind of converging. So it looks like a wedge that's rising. What Auto Charles is telling us is that the price of USD CAD has been rising between these two, uh, what we call support and resistance levels. And you're going to see one or two lines like this in everything uh, around Auto Charles. I'll show you one or two exceptions to that, but a lot of things have got to do about overbought, oversold levels. So the markets really work in uh, around psychology, right? Um, you keep on hearing things like market psychology, market psychology, when is something too expensive, when is something too cheap? And you hear the same words uh, when, you, when people trade FX, when people trade currencies, futures, wh whatever, whatever you want, when there's over supply, the price goes down. When there's more demand uh, than supply, then the price goes up. You probably experience the same thing if you've ever bought yourself a house, right? Sometimes they say it's a seller's market. Sometimes they say it's a buy it's a buyer's market, right? That's the same thing, just in a different financial instrument, right? These are called overbought and oversold levels. And so what we have here is the price, uh, and I'm going to change my my uh, pen color uh, to just. Uh, quickly highlight some of the stuff. What we have here is uh, USD CAD going through uh, um, oversupply, it's becoming too cheap, then it's overbought, and then oversold, and then it's overbought, right? And so we can see how this price fluctuate, fluctuates in these overbought, oversold levels. And I'll explain this last bit to you in just a moment. Before I, I first, I'm just going to go through a few examples. Let's look at a, a different example here. Let's look at um, this Canadian dollar Swiss franc example on H1. So if we look at this example, here we don't get an overbought, oversold level. Right? Here what we're getting is simply 
a, a level that the, the price has been uh, attacking. Uh, oh, well, let me actually shrink this chart a little bit. It's been, um, it's been hitting this level again and again and again over the last uh, over the last little while, right? Over the last few weeks or months. Let me highlight those uh, those points to you. The price has hit uh, this level here, this level here. It's hit it again here. Uh, it's kind of hit it over here. And now what order chart is saying to us that Canadian dollar Swiss franc on the hourly chart is approaching a resistance level. Right? So it's approaching this level over here. So notice that this little icon on order charters is actually uh, not colored. It's not red or green, it's gray, which means that the price has not yet broken through that level. If we go back and we look at this USD CAD example over here, notice how the price has actually broken through the support level. Now, what we're saying here is that according to the theory of technical chart patterns, we believe that the trend has now changed. It was an upward trend, clearly, right, in USD CAD. And now, potentially, there's been a downward breakout with a target uh, towards uh, this gray area, right? Give me one moment. So now, um, you can see now, you're probably wondering what this big gray block is uh, that all the charters came up with. This is this target, uh, this target area where we think the price is going. So now I want to come back to what is order chartist? I'm going to take right a, a, a step right back because I've shown you briefly what it does. And now I want to I want to tell you that order chartist is nothing new. It is not a, a it's it, it it might be a brand you've never encountered before in the in the form of this word order chartist. But the theory of chart patterns goes back to the 1930s. Uh, it, it was originally called Dow theory. Dow market theory, you can Google that. Or um, more recently, in the last kind of decade or two, it's been uh, phrased as technical chart patterns. And that's all about how price has fluctuated between overbought, oversold levels. And then uh, when they have a breakout through a support or resistance line, um, the theory provides us a target region of where the price is going. Okay. Um, so, with that in mind, let's go through a few more examples of the kind of things that order chartist uh, identifies for us. So, let's look at this USD CAD example. I'm going to click on USD CAD. And now you can see that we initially we had a USD CAD example, that rising wedge. It was a very big wedge over here. Now I click on this USD CAD support. And we can see what's actually happened. Oh, when order charters identified this an hour ago or two hours ago, um, it was still hadn't broken out. Now it's actually broken out through the price. And I'm guessing here um, that uh, uh, order chart is actually going to have a red arrow it, probably in the next in the next few minutes to show that there's been a breakout uh, through this line. Let's look at this GBP um, GBP USD example. So this is a slightly different example. Um, in this example, order charters has identified what we call a big movement, right? A big, and, and you can see clearly that it's done exactly that, and it's done it very, very well. It's actually picked up the fact that the pound has dropped a significant amount down to current levels, right? On this, uh, on this hourly chart, right? It's the hourly chart. In this kind of, um, uh, 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 trading opportunity. What we're saying is that the pound has moved excessively, uh, an excessive amount uh, compared to its normal movement, right? So, uh, in fact, if you if you have any knowledge of, of statistics, what we're identifying is movements which are within the 98th uh, percentile uh, of all previous movements in the last, uh, I believe it's. Um, 
uh, 600 or 1,000 candles, right? So if you look back in the history of uh, uh, pound USD, this kind of thing happens uh, very, very uh, rarely. Now, there's two schools of thought, of course, on uh, what this says to you. The one school of thought says the trend is going to continue down. The other school of thought uh, says that, oh, no, it's moved down too much and we think it's going to go up now. All right. Now, uh, I'm not going to tell you, you know, obviously dictate you. I'm not going to dictate you which way uh, I think it's going to go. Uh, but certainly there's two schools of thought in it. I'll give you uh, my uh, my personal view again, uh, 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 for in, at the risk of of of, uh, of, uh, of skewing your your opinions, but uh, my personal view is that um, I believe in in uh, in the fact that things in the market never go in one direction for a long period of time. There's always uh, um, this upward and downward movement in the form of uh, market noise, right? So even if the, you believe the trend is going to uh, continue, right? Uh, so let me squash this thing up. Even if you believe that the price is going to continue uh, in the longer term going down, um, there I believe, I am a little bit contrarian. Yes, sure, I'll give that to you. But in FX, now we, the costs are so low to trade that I believe it's possible to trade the very short-term volatility, right? So it's it's real easy for someone to say, you know what? I believe the long-term trend is going to go down, but there is a possibility to trade the short-term um, up and down uh, volatility movements. So try to keep that in mind. It really depends on the style of trader uh, that that you are. Okay. Uh, let me continue on a few more examples. Let's look at GBP Swiss franc. There's one more example that I want to go through over here. GBP Swiss franc on the four hourly chart. And what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And so this is the last kind of example that I want to show you here. And this is consecutive candles. Okay. So what Order Charles is saying to us here is that we've identified there have been numerous consecutive bearish candles um, on uh, pound Swiss franc, right? And we can see that we've actually done a pretty good uh, a job of identifying that. Um, but just like the big movement identification, uh, we're only identifying uh, situations in which there are an exceptional amount of consecutive candles that have moved in a certain direction, right? So what we're saying in this situation, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven consecutive bearish candles have occurred. And interestingly enough, if we zoom in even more, uh, we can see that the latest candle on uh, pound Swiss franc is actually bullish. This last four hourly candle is actually bullish. So in the last 30 minutes, it's bouncing up. Again, this is what I'm talking about around um, around a uh, trading short-term uh, volatility. It's moved a lot. It's bouncing a little bit up. I don't know what it's going to go to in the long term, of course, uh, but, but certainly in the short term, it looks like it's moving up uh, rebounding uh, just a little bit. While I've been talking so much, um, I've got some, uh, some questions coming up. So let me see if, I, if, I, if there's um, something that I could, uh, that I could go to. Okay, I'm, I'm having some trouble with my, uh, let me just close a few windows here. I've got too many windows open, so I'm struggling to see the, uh, struggling to see the, the question. Sorry, everyone, let me just uh, try and open this window a little more. Okay. Um, uh, right, okay, so there's a little bit of a confusion here um, around, around what I said about, about the Canadian dollar. So let me try and, uh, let me try and explain. Okay, so Louis, uh, let me try and explain that Canadian dollar thing to you again. So if I click on the Canadian dollar opportunity here, what this opportunity is telling me is that the price is going down towards this uh, gray area. So we think it's a bearish opportunity down to 131.27. Uh, if I click on this support opportunity over here, it's also saying down because in the same way uh, the previous one had a breakout, this one in fact 
also had a breakout. So in fact, both of these uh, opportunities, let me circle them in my list here, USD CAD and uh, USD CAD over here, they're both saying, oh, I have a terrible drawing with my mouse, sorry about that. Uh, both of them uh, say uh, down, right? If you can actually see um, uh, those arrows over here uh, on those opportunities, what those arrows actually are telling you, um, just to, to be clear from a trading perspective, is that the prevailing current trend is down. That is what these little arrows actually mean to you, right? And you can see that the direction is in um, is uh, pointing in the same way. I hope that uh, makes it clear, Louis. Uh, thank you for asking that question. Um, I think that because I was running late uh, for this webinar, because of the time mix up, I, I, I might be rushing a little bit because my adrenaline is, is pumping a bit. So <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry if I, if I went through that uh, too quickly. All right, so uh, let, let me continue with a little bit more information about, uh, about, uh, about auto charts and what it does for you. Now, I'm sure many of you uh, noticed these blue lines on the outside of my charts. Okay, so those are not Fibonacci lines, right? Sometimes people think those are Fibonacci lines. They're actually not Fibonacci lines. And in fact, I think they're a lot more powerful than Fibonacci lines. Let me explain what they are. Uh, a very, very important part of, of, uh, of trading uh, is where you set your stop losses and take profit levels. Now, Many people think that trading successfully is about market timing and timing your entries really well. Well, I can tell you that the way in which uh, professional trading houses trade their professional traders is by making them open random positions at random times and seeing what they do with the risk. I want to explain this to you, that being a successful trader is about two things. It's about your market timing, your market entry in, but it's equally important to manage your risk and exit and time your exit. Okay. And so what this, these lines on the outside show you expected market volatility, right? So in this situation, we're looking at uh, the USD CAD H1. So what it's showing us is the hourly expected trading range, the four hourly expected trading range, and the 24 hour expected trading range. Now, uh, what does it mean expected trading range? Well, I'll tell you this, and I hope you've learned this already, that different instruments trade uh, have a different amount of movement for different times of day. So if you look, if you're trading Euro dollar, for example, you're gonna see a lot of movement during the opening of London and during the opening of New York, right? That's 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. London time and 8 a.m., 9 a.m. New York time. If you're trading Canadian dollar, you're gonna see very much the same thing, but a lot more volatility during the opening of the US markets, right? So during the New York opening time because Toronto, which is Canada, is also at the same time zone as New York. If you're trading Australian dollar, then you're looking at uh, three volatile times, the opening of Sydney and Japan, uh, London and uh, New York, right? So four, but Sydney and Japan are kind of in the same, uh, within only within a few hours of, of time difference. And so what you will find is that for different times of day, the um, uh, these lines expand and contract, right? To show you the expected volatility movement is changing right, for those instruments. So when looking at this, I can look at this uh, USD CAD example, and I see that, okay, this is where it's gonna trade in the next hour. So I can easily start thinking about not setting my stop losses way out of these lines. So I shouldn't be setting my stop loss up here if I'm trying to day trade, right? Let me move this pattern details thing out of the way. If I want to day trade, I shouldn't be setting it up there. 
<coughs> oh, excuse me, I just sneezed, um, which means I'm telling the truth. I'm not sure if you guys are superstitious. I am. If you sneeze on something, it means I'm telling the truth, right? <laughs> uh, that's what my uh, grandmother used to tell me. Uh, so, uh, because why wouldn't I set my stop loss up there? Because this is a massive amount of volatility, and chances are, if I call it wrong, I'm only going to hit that price level in the next over 24 hours. So what I want to try to do is I want to try to set that volatility within a reasonable amount of time. Like I want to say, okay, if I call it wrong, I want to exit my position in the next four hours or in the next uh, one hour, right? So this is a more meaningful way uh, to set your stop losses or even your, your take profits. Okay, I see that there's a question coming up. So let me quickly pause just to answer that question. Um, uh, uh, okay, so I see that um, uh, Harry Home uh, um, is asking a question about how do I know that my order chart is working uh, correctly? Oh, so um, Harry Home, if you drag and drop your order chart as expert advisor onto your chart, you will see that there is a there is this window, this market scanner that comes up on the left hand side. That's how you know that there is a um, a uh, that order chart is working uh, correctly. But just in case you you want to know that. Okay, so I'm going to show you a slightly different version of this expected market volatility, <clears throat> and that's the second little indicator that gets installed in your order charters at the same time as the market scanner. It's called order charters risk calculator. All right, I'm going to drag that onto the chart. Okay, and something like this comes up, the order charters risk calculator. Now, I want to first, I want to let you know that we will be doing an entire webinar session just on this risk calculator. But just for this overview, I'm going to give you a, literally a five minute explanation of what it does. If you've ever heard the words risk management, this is probably the most, the most useful tool you will ever encounter for risk management. Okay, let me show you what it does. You can see that I have a balance in my account of $138, right? Now, what some of you do, let's say we want to go short on USD CAD. Some of you do is you have this volume of one and you click sell at market with a volume of one. And then you go and trade a different instrument and you keep a volume of one and you sell. But you don't actually know how much money you're risking. So let me show you what we do with this risk calculator. First, I want to drag and drop it onto your chart again. Notice I have no lines on my chart. When I drag it onto my chart, an orange line comes up. An orange line comes up. Now, this orange line is where I'm going to tell my risk calculator that I want to set my stop loss. So let's say I want to go short on USD CAD. And I want to set my stop loss at this orange line. What I want to tell this risk calculator now is how much money I want to risk on this trade. So let's I want to risk $10 because I have $100 in my, well, $138 in my account. I want to risk $10, which in my opinion is even too much. Okay. But let's just say I want to trade risk $10. This risk calculator is telling me that I should only trade 0 0.06 of a lot in order to risk $10. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on new order. I'm going to set my stop loss. Uh, let me just move this uh, out of the way. I'm going to set my stop loss to be 1.31771. And I'm going to set my volume to be 0 0.06 and I'm going to sell at market. So this is, well, I'm not sure if you appreciate this right now, but you will very soon, is that I have placed a position on USD CAD, one hourly chart short with a stop loss around 131.77. And I know that if I hit 
this level, I will risk only $10 of my capital. Okay. Now, I'll show you the power of this in just a moment when I take the next example. But um, now, check this out. Now, I want to trade something else. Let's say I want to trade some obscure uh, 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 thing. Let's say ORD CAD. Let's just say I want to trade ORD CAD. Let me trade the four hourly ORD CAD chart. Okay? Four hourly ORD CAD chart. Now, I, let's say I want to go short on this, on this instrument and I want to set my stop loss over here. Now, I want to set my stop loss here. I want to go short and I want to risk again only $10. Look at what it's telling me to set my position size at, right? So let's do that. Let's trade ORD CAD short and set my uh, stop loss uh, to be uh, 0 0.91002. And I'm going to set my position size to be 0 0.08. Sell at market. Note to sort of done. I have traded. USD CAD on the hourly chart. I've traded ORD CAD on the four hourly chart and I've set contrary stop losses. Yet in both situations, I've only risked $10. Right? This is an extremely, extremely powerful tool to make sure that you don't underexpose or overexpose your uh, uh, your positions, right? So you know how much you're risking, and when you're trading different instruments, you don't trade different amount of risks on your a different amount of risk on your instruments. Okay, so I've been going for over 30 minutes, and I want to come back to one last thing, back at the uh, order chart scanner, because I'm sure there is uh, one thing on everybody's mind. Um, in terms of these trade setups. And that one thing on your mind is probably which are the best trading opportunities? Okay, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to answer that question briefly, um, but I'm really going to answer it at the next webinar, hoping that you will join me at the next webinar. This is my little teaser. So, order chartists actually keeps track of the performance statistics of all the opportunities, right? And I'm not even going to show them to you now. I'm going to show you that you're there, that they're there. I'll give you some homework to do. If you click on this little world icon and you uh, select the performance statistics URL, you will actually show the past performance statistics of order charts, right? But it's better. Before the next webinar, I am going to get myself a VIP account. A VIP account meaning um, that I meet a certain threshold. I wonder if one of my uh, colleagues uh, at um, a Tickmo can tell me what that minimum deposit level is to get a VIP account. Now, if you reach that minimum deposit level at, um, uh, at, at Tickmo, you get an additional little box that gets drawn over here. And it's a little filter that says, show me only the best trading opportunities. Okay, so in the next webinar, I am going to uh, show you how to use that little tick box to filter for the best trading opportunities. Now, if you don't have a VIP account, um, don't worry. I will also talk about the past performance statistics uh, in general. So you can actually do some of the work yourself uh, to filter out uh, the, uh, the best opportunities um, uh, that Auto Charters provides. Uh, uh, but for those uh, VIP customers, uh, there's a mechanism that does that um, uh, for you, right? And we'll discuss that at the next uh, webinar. Okay, I have given you an immense amount of information. Uh, and, and once again, I just want to apologize uh, for getting the times confused. Um, 
uh, absolutely my fault and I'm so grateful that you all uh, hung around uh, to listen uh, to me talking. So I'd like to open up the floor for just a few moments uh, for some questions, if you have any. I don't see any questions coming up, which means that I'm the best presenter in the world and, um, and no one has any questions because I was super clear and everyone understands my funny South African accent. Okay, uh, Ro Roman is, is saying, um, um, is asking, uh, how does he install Border Chartist? Uh, give me one moment to get you that link. Give me one moment, everyone. I want to pause my screen sharing and get that to you. Okay, if you can hear me typing away, um, I'm uh, trying to get uh, that link for, for all of you. Uh, give me one sec. Okay, here we are. Uh, right, so I'm sharing a link with everyone. I'm sending everyone a link. Um, so, uh, there it is, you should have it. In that link, if you scroll down the page, you will see and install the MT4, uh, um, uh, install the MT4 plugin link. So you, I hope you've all got that. Please tell me if you do have that. You can just give me a thumbs up or, uh, or something that you got that link. Great, you got it. All right, so everyone's got that link. Uh, so, you can click on that link, scroll down, and you'll see how to use and install the plugin. Download that thing, click next, 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 next. I also see um, uh, that um, uh, you're asking, John is asking, I have a live account, may I use AutoCharters and demo account? John, you absolutely can use AutoCharters and a demo account. There is one little limitation to it on a demo. It's a little bit delayed. It's delayed by a candle or two. So um, it'll show you kind of what's happened a few candles ago rather than live, but it'll certainly give you a very, very good idea of, of what the tool does. Uh, now, uh, Mohammed, uh, I see that you're asking, can I give you a pre a, a, do another little presentation about the risk calculator? Now, instead of doing that, because I'm up with my time, I'm gonna do something much better. Um, and I'm going to send uh, everyone another uh, link, which is uh, really, really a good link. Uh, and I'm going to send this link to everyone. Okay, I've sent you a link to uh, uh, an order charters hosted MetaTrader plugin demo. And on that demo are four very short videos. I think they're about five minutes each. And one of them, is about the risk calculator. Please watch that video. It is an awesome and awesome video to watch. It tells you what I told you, except it doesn't take 10 minutes to do it. It takes less than five minutes to do it, right? Uh, so please watch that video. Uh, in fact, it might even be me on that video. I don't remember. Uh, so watch that video. It really does a, a good job of explaining uh, the, the, uh, the, um, uh, the, Meta, the, the MetaTrader risk calculator plugin. Okay, I have gone way over my time. Uh, I want to thank everyone for attending and I really hope to see you at the next webinar where we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be talking about the risk calculator in more detail. Uh, I think that's the, in two webinars from now, the next webinar, we're going to be talking about how to use auto charters uh, to filter out the best trading opportunities based on past performance. Um, and so uh, I hope that uh, you'll join us for the next one. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.